Hello, everyone. I'm Blaine Gilmer. Welcome to Southeastern 14. We continue our countdown of the top five SEC quarterbacks heading into the 2023 season. Let's recap a little bit of where we have been in the honorable mention category. We had the Ole Miss quarterback, whoever it ends up being, whether it's Spencer Saunders, Walker Howard, Jackson Dart, we don't know. Can't in good conscience put one of those guys in the top five when we don't know if they're going to be the starter or not. The same thing can be said at Alabama. We don't know who the quarterback's going to be. They don't know who the quarterback's going to be. You have to feel like Tyler Buckner isn't transferring down from Notre Dame with his former coordinator who did, I think it's interesting, did have a hand in replacing him at Notre Dame. But I guess they're letting bygones be bygones. So we'll see. Is it going to be Jalen Milrow, Ty Simpson? Uh, Tyler Buckner, we have no idea who's going to end up being the guy over there. Can't put him in the top five. I can't put Carson Beck in the top five yet. Georgia hadn't officially named him the starter. He's got a lot to prove. Can't put him in there. I think by the end of the season, when we update this, he'll definitely be in the top five. And also, I can't put Joe Milton in there because Joe Milton has not shown that he can do it for an entire season. Every time Joe Milton has been the starter, whether that was at Michigan or whether that was at Tennessee, before Hennon Hooker, Wally pipped him and took over his job there, he's not shown the ability to hold on to a starting job for an entire season. So we will see if Joe Milton can do that and hold off Nico Imaliva. But those are the honorable mentions. Also, Spencer's, Spencer Rattler, can't put him in there too much inconsistency. Our number five was Connor Wigman. He came in, took over the starting job for Texas A&M last year, even with Jimbo Fisher calling plays and that antiquated offensive style that he had, and he added spark. He did not turn the ball over. They got better once he became their quarterback. He's going to be even better with Bobby Petrino as his play caller. He's got some weapons over there with Evan Stewart, Moose Muhammad, and I Smith. I think you're going to see Connor Wigman have a very good year. Put him at number five. At number four, we had Will Rogers. He's got as many – numbers and, and as much experience he's seen as many defensive looks as anybody with what people tried to do week in and week out to stop mike leach and company in the air raid now he has kevin barbe coming over from appalachian state a more pro style system so we put will rogers at number four and number three kj jefferson as you see behind me uh the big man from arkansas he is a guy who is Got a lot of accomplishments in his career as well. 48 touchdowns, 10 interceptions overall on his career. 65.5% uh, completion percentage. Listen, efficiency has not been a problem for the six foot three, 245 pound quarterback. Okay. They've been efficient. Now, can KJ Jefferson tighten things up and he's going to need to with a wide receiving core that is he, he lost guys uh, to the NFL draft last year. Matt Landers ended up being a tremendous receiver for Arkansas. Um, and then also, you know, when you have guys that you've lost over the years, Traylon Burks from two years ago, Matt Landers this past year, they're looking for a guy who's going to step up and be that person be the guy that is going to be the go-to receiver. Is it going to be Andrew Armstrong? Is it going to be Tyrone Broden, the transfer in from Bowling Green, Isaac Tesla? Who knows if any of these newcomers are going to be the guy. Bryce Stevens had some good looks in the spring, Sam Mbake. So there are guys that have have the ability, but it's going to be incumbent now upon this is this is KJ Jefferson's offense. Dan Enos comes in. He's 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 coming in and bringing – he used to be more of a pro-style type guy. Now he's been around the likes of Cincinnati, of Alabama, of Miami, and he's learned uh, a lot more of the, the RPO style of system. So, you know, he's replacing Kendall Bryles there. And when, when you come in as Dan Enos, you know one thing, okay, you know that you're going to have a coach that puts – priority on offensive line play and being able to run the football that helps KJ Jefferson out um, but now he's going to have more I think ability to affect this offense because when you're talking about the RPO style game and you have the legs that KJ Jefferson has now 
the defense, it used to be defense, okay, if you have to worry about quarterback run, you're really a man down because they have plus one an extra blocker or you have to, if they're reading a the guy, you have to be able to account for another gap. Well, now take that to a next level and you can affect multiple levels of the defense in the RPO game. And Dan Enos has been around the likes of the, the two Tunga Vailoas of the world, the Desmond Ritters of the world that have had success doing that. And he's been able to see these schemes that have been able to build upon the, the RPO. So whether it's how does a safety fit in the run game when we stick the ball in the belly of Rocket Sanders or, you know, hey, when we get the ball uh, going out wide here on a, on a power read type look with KJ, does this linebacker fit here? If so, we can put a, a slant right in behind him. So many options for Arkansas. And I think KJ Jefferson and the maturity that he brings combined with the, the experience of this is a guy who has, you know, he's played at Ole Miss. He's played at LSU. Uh, he has played at Alabama, so there is nothing that's gonna gonna daunt him here in the in the schedule in 2023 in terms of hey what what have I seen what have I not seen all the looks and things like that. Um, I think you've seen toughness out of him in his career. KJ Jefferson has over 1,400 rushing yards over three games. Uh, his three games where he's rushed for over 100 yards. So I think his legs obviously are always going to be a big impact. But I think Dan Enos with the running back core that they have there, the running back room, you know, Rocket Sanders, A.J. Green, Rashad DeBinion, they have a lot of guys that can tote the rock. And like I said, when you got a young or inexperienced youthful wide receiving core then i think that you got to be able to run that football early and the, the the rpo game um being able to to affect multiple levels of the defense seeing how they're going to fit those runs and then being able to design the routes that are going to affect that defense if they do decide to fit the run a certain way i think that's going to be huge huge for kj jefferson in his third full year as a starter, uh, I think that just with the the overall leadership qualities that that Sam Pittman knows that KJ Jefferson has, he believes in KJ Jefferson. I think you're going to see him have a big step forward this year. Listen, it's not that he's already not been efficient. 65.5 percent pass completion. We know that, but what you need to see out of KJ Jefferson and what he needs to show if he's going to be an NFL quarterback is not just being put in the ball in catchable areas where guys with um, big catch radiuses like Matt Landers and Traylon Burks can can make plays if it's anywhere close. He needs to be more precise in terms of, okay, I need to put the ball where a guy can make a play and run after the catch, doesn't break stride, and is able to, you know, I need to make my receivers better by having pinpoint accuracy and being there. If his footwork comes along with that strong arm that he has and really tightens some things up that I think Dan Enos in particular can help him with, then I think you see K.J. Jefferson have a huge year in 2023. I really like Arkansas. Personally, we do power rankings. Personally, I had Arkansas uh, up at number three uh, in the SEC West, in my power rankings, I think right there behind Alabama and LSU, I think Arkansas could have a special year this year and get back up into that 9-10 win category uh, if K.J. Jefferson takes the steps that I believe he's going to under Danny Enos. Let us know your thoughts on K.J. Jefferson at number three about the other quarterbacks that I had listed or did not have listed on this list myself. Chris Lee, Blake Lovell, we all come together and do schedule previews. We do different topics along college football all throughout all throughout the season. We'll have live streams on here. So make sure to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and be a part of the conversation here on Southeastern 14, soon to be Southeastern 16, when Texas and Oklahoma officially move in to the conference. That is not far away so guys thank you so much for tuning in like i said let us know what you think in the comments like subscribe turn on notifications and we will catch you guys next time on southeastern 14 to talk more sec football